So I saw your, um, I saw a bunch of your pictures from the weekend at Railbird. Yes. Tell yes. us all about it. Oh my goodness. I, you know, going into Railbird, I would have told you that you would be hard pressed to find a festival that had such a stocked lineup. Um, in the, you know, Americana country bluegrass space, Railbird is definitely has a more Americana bend and more of a country bluegrass bend than some festivals out there. But oh my goodness, it, it lived up to the expectation. Um, I, the, the, the acts were, for, for those of you who don't know, Railbird was this, the, the, this past weekend as we're recording this early June. So the first weekend of June, Lexington, Kentucky, I think it's the fourth time they've had it. I was actually at the first one, missed the last two, but I went this year and I went this year because this is, this is basically the lineup. You had, uh, Chris Stapleton, Hosier, uh, Noah Kahn, Marcus King, Brent Cobb, Turnpike Troubadours, Red Clay Strays, Dwight Yoakam, Counting Crows, Trampled by Turtles, Allison Russell, Lord Huron, Flatland Cavalry, Kip Moore. I mean, and those are just, that's just like the mid-tier and up. <laughs> like there were a bunch of others that are fantastic that I got to see as well. And I can't, I can't tell you, let me tell you, let me put it to you this way. Two things happened. Uh, that will tell you how good of a festival it was. Number one, it, it was either raining or the sun was beating down on you. It wasn't hot necessarily. It was very humid. So it was either raining or the sun was beating down on you to the point you got sunburned the whole time. Nobody cared. Mm. Not a single person cared. We were wet. We were sloppy. We stunk. We were sunburned. We were tired. Nobody cared. We had a <laughs> blast. So that's one. The second one was, uh, and, and this is my highlight, I guess, of the, of the whole show, although there were several. I came off, walked back from the stage watching Marcus King live and the Marcus King band live and immediately booked tickets for the next Marcus King show that's close to me. That's how good he was. Yeah. Blew my face off. Yeah. Absolutely was the best live performance I have seen since uh, uh, watching Whitney Houston sing live in a room in 1987. Oh, wow. That's how good he was. It wasn't just his guitar playing, which is impeccable. His voice live is incredible. And his yeah. band is incredible. And they play their asses off. And it was just, it was amazing. Sounds like it. Wow. I've not seen him live, but I know... I know plenty of people who have, who have, and they all say the same thing that he is just tremendous. So I not only immediately dialed up tickets for a show in Indianapolis in July, I bought one for my son. My son loves Marcus King too. Oh, okay. and, I, and I had been thinking, well, we, we, I should buy tickets to that indie show and we'll go. Um, but Grant was going to come to Railbird. He got a new job and had to work. So we, we had to sell his ticket. He couldn't come. Right. Right. And so I immediately was like, okay, I'm buying those tickets. Um, when I saw Marcus live, I not only bought the tickets, I bought the VIP experience. I bought the VIP like bar experience, parking the whole, I'm, I'm, I'm overloading everything on that night because I, I expect to have a blast and we're, we get a, I think we get a pre-show acoustic set from him. Oh, um, wow. So yeah, we're I'm going all in on Marcus. Hours? This is in Indianapolis in the middle of July. I'm going all in on Marcus King. Uh, he's my new uh, obsession. I just watching him live is an experience. Wow. And, uh, Very and nice. So, and then there was, and then I got to see Brent Cobb, who for mm -hmm. some ungodly reason was the one o'clock opener on Sunday. He should have been the seven o'clock, you know, opener before the big act. Um, but because nobody, everybody was probably hung over from Saturday, I got right up close and was able to see Brent Cobb, you know, up close, and, and, and that was awesome. Um, I got to see Dwight Yoakam for the sixth time. Um, if you were following the news over the weekend, though, uh, Dwight got about halfway through his set, and he was doing a cover of Crazy Little Thing Called Love by mm -hmm. Queen, mm -hmm. and he started missing words. 
and he was and he stopped playing his guitar and kind of leaned on his guitar a little bit and he kept looking off to the side and i thought he there was something wrong with the sound at first is what i thought was going on yeah it's like he wasn't happy with the guitar and was looking for the guitar tech or something and it turns out he made it through the song but he was missing words he was it was almost like you know almost like a rapper like three or four words would be would would be there and he wouldn't say him. And then he would emphasize the last word of the line. And he was closing his eyes and he was leaning on his guitar. And I started to think something's wrong. And then he motioned for the guitar tech to come out after the song, the guitar tech comes over, hands him his other guitar and Dwight like puts his arm around him and leans on the guy and they escorted him off stage. Oh, wow. And for about two minutes, we were freaked out. Yeah. That's concerning. We thought we thought there was something really wrong. They came back a couple minutes later and announced, hey, everybody, Dwight got overheated. He'll be back out in just a second. Hang tight. And apparently he had some heat exhaustion. Sure. Um, he came back out. He did two more songs. He wasn't, it wasn't there. He shouldn't have been back out there. Should not have been back out there. Oh. Um, he did two more songs and he just, at the, after the second one, he just said, guys, I got to go. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, then he, and then he walked on stage. So his, his team issued a statement, you know, that he did suffer from heat exhaustion, apologized. Um, so he ended up doing probably a little bit more than half of, of his set. Um, and we were all really concerned, but again, everybody was there in this like, you know, festival mode of, we love music. We love these artists. And so nobody really complained about it. It was like, well, I hope he's okay. Right. And then, right. And then we migrated to the next thing, but, um, that was a, a very strange to be in the audience for that. I was, sure. you know, I, I can't very imagine concerned for a few minutes, but, but up, otherwise, oh man, such so Allison Russell live who we actually, uh, today on the show are, are talking to Kaya Cater, who is a fellow Canadian and, uh, Allison actually makes an appearance on appearance on her album. She was phenomenal. Turnpike Troubadours, phenomenal. Um, I'm not. Uh, a huge Noah Khan guy or a huge Hozier guy, but both were great. I stayed for a couple songs of each one of them. I didn't stay for the whole thing. Noah Khan was the, the last one on Saturday and we were exhausted. Yeah. Um, but I made, I, ca- I promised Katie I would stay and watch Noah Khan for a little while and I did. And, uh, but yeah, it, I couldn't, I mean, I'm just telling you and oh, and the red clay strays were unfortunately on the small stage because okay. apparently they made the schedule before the red clay strays blew up. Right. <laughs> so uh, everywhere right now, there's a, an aerial shot, um, that, uh, my friend, Pat Younger, who I re- recommended on yep. picking the print not long ago, he posted on Instagram or Facebook or something. There's an aerial shot from a drone that shows that tent and the overage during red clay strays. And you could have, they should have been on the big stage. Yeah. It was, it was huge. Wow. Um, but they were fantastic. Uh, Karen and I didn't make it under the tent part, but we were in the back a little bit outside. We could see him and hear him just fine. And, oh, that's good. Uh, cool. It was such a, it was such a great show. I'm going to be talking about Railbird 2024 for a long damn time. It was a great weekend. Well, I'm very happy to hear that. It looked like it from your pictures, even when you guys were in your rain ponchos and looking all soggy, you were still smiling and, um, it looked like a good time. I have to ask about uh, Counting Crows. Did you see their set? I did. And I, I've got to, I got to tell you, I was never, I didn't dislike Counting Crows, but I was never a big Counting Crows fan. I like okay. their music when it comes on the radio. I'm like, Oh, that's a good song. I like that. You know? Yeah. Um, they were really good. I so was. You, this, okay. And, and the reason I'm asking is because back in the nineties, like late nineties, early two thousands, I saw Counting Crows a couple of times and I said, I'm not going to go see them anymore. And I'm wondering if they're still doing what they were doing then, which was um, changing up the way their popular songs sound so that the audience can't sing along. No, no, they didn't do that. Okay. No, No, this was very much a bunch of middle-aged guys playing their hits to make the crowd happy and, Okay. And, and Adam is a very animated lead singer. Like he's, mm-hmm. he's into it. He's telling you the story, his facial expressions, his gestures and everything are, are part of the storytelling. And I thought that I was really uh, kind of captivated by him. I thought he was really good. I thought they were really good. They sounded good. 
And um, I was I was impressed. I, I, I they looked like you know a bunch of middle aged guys. They're old now, but or older now. Yeah. But uh, but they sounded great. Yeah. Well, that's good. I uh, was annoyed, you know, because this was when they they saw like the first of their major success, right? Um, and you know, Mr. Jones, that's a very identifiable song and it's got a particular sound right and you know people are going to see this band that they've probably just learned about again i'm talking about the late 90s and then they want they're expecting to hear the songs that caught their attention and made them you know kind of like this band and sure. you hear it live and it sounds completely different <laughs> and you know I, that that was my experience. I think it was twice that I saw Counting Crows and the same thing happened. And not that I wanted to sing along, but it it just, it didn't sound the same. You know, I liked the songs on the record, the way that they were recorded. And that's how I expect to hear them when I'm paying money to see them live, you know? Um, so after that, I said, I wasn't going to even try to see Counting Crows anymore. And I'm not trying to take anything away from Adam and the band or anything. Um, I still listen to August and everything after, you know, like on repeat. I love that album. Um, so it's just, it was annoying as a consumer. <clears throat> it was just annoying, you know? Yeah. Understood. Well, they were, they were very good. Um, they did not do uh, last December because mm -hmm. Adam came out and did a duet with Noah Condring, his set of that song. Oh, um, wow. I bet that was so, great. Yeah, that was, it was cool. We were leaving at that point, so I didn't actually see it, but I heard it and it sounded great. Um, and then later I left before Noah Con brought out Hosier and they did their, their song. Over an attitude. Uh, yeah. So that was, uh, you know, that was great for the fans there. Again, I'm not a big Noah Khan guy. I watched a couple songs and then we left because we were exhausted. Yeah. Um, but, and Chris Stapleton, it was my first time seeing him live. I've actually had the honor of meeting him before, but I've never seen him play. And I, he's just got it. He's dialed in, man. He's at the top of the mountaintop and you can't get much better. The show yeah. was amazing. He's just so good. His songs are so good. His band is amazing. Um, it was really funny. Somebody uh, from his high school, Johnson Central High School in Paintsville, Kentucky, held up a sign that said, will you sign my JCHS diploma? Oh, and it was probably the second or third song in. He looks down and he goes, did you really bring your diploma here for me to sign? And the kid's like, yeah. And he tells security to go get the diploma. They brought the diploma up on stage. He signed it and gave it back to the kid <laughs> right oh, in the middle of the show. Yeah. Yeah. It was oh, cool. man. How very, awesome. What a thrill very, that must have been for that kid. It was a very Kentucky thing to have happen, and, and it was good. 